Okay, so this is how I ended up unpacking Quackplot. Um, so, um, in Zero to Automated's course, they asked you to put a breakpoint on uh, Virtual Lock, but you don't have Virtual Lock. It uses Virtual Lock Extend for this version of Quackplot. So, I use the same command dump in imports qbot.exec. And if you look at kernel32.dll, you see virtual lock x instead of virtual lock. Um, so I try to, ahead of time, figure out what to put breakpoints on. Um, this one's git module handle wide, and we have virtual lock x. So that's why, like uh, in the video, um, it went straight to virtual protect. Um, instead of uh, breaking on virtual lock. So these are also important functions that you might want to look at. I might actually put a breakpoint here to see what happens. Breakpoint show exact x because I saw this spawn another suspicious process. So I just want to go do some experimentation. Um, so let's go back to, is this um, still recording? Yeah. So let's go back on my breakpoints. Um, so to deal with this problem, I put it on regular virtual lock, not extended, virtual protect, is debugger present, like how the video does it. Uh, I also put breakpoints on create process, as user ANSI, wide, create process internal, because I'm not sure how it was spawning a different process. It actually spawned a child process. So, and I put, um, Let's see, what is that shell execute exec? That looks important. Shell execute exec, p exec info, performs an operation on a specified file. Great, let's see if we can actually hit this breakpoint after we unpack. Um, Quackbot. So I'm going to press the restart button. I'm going to jump to user land code. And then I'm going to press play. And it's going to take a while to get to virtual lock X. Which, let's see, virtual lock X. We're, we just hit the breakpoint, by the way. So let's see, handle process. That's argument one. LP address size is this many uh, in hex to allocate to the memory page. Um, allocation type is hex 3000. Your magic number for page read, write, execute. Uh, let me show you what I mean by that. Memory API page read, write, execute. Because you have to memorize this as your memory protection constants. So this is page execute, right? That's hex 10. Page execute read write, also commonly known as RWX. That means that it's allocating to this space in memory. So if I click on this button and click here, follow and dump. Let me go back to dump one, follow and dump. And it's gonna set this page starting from this uh, memory address range to page read write execute okay so we can go click on memory map read write execute and if we did a uh, worst process hacker oops didn't want to change that process hacker qbot um, where was it so 238 Four zeros, two, three, eight, four zeros, and this is where we're allocating memory two. It's empty right now, but if we press play again, we get this, and then we hit virtual protect. So if you check right here again, you get this, which is not an executable but it does look like some sort of memory. I wonder if there's an MZ header in here. Nothing. 
Okay. So, that's what I'm talking about, like a memory protection constant. Magic number for read, write, execute is hex 40. Um, a lot of people that do custom shell coding, they always set uh, virtual protect to change the protection permissions to hex 40. So we hit the breakpoint of virtual protect, and I can dump here because virtual protect. Let's see. Virtual protect memory API. So we set this to the region of pages, memory pages, that we're going to change and call virtual protect on. Um, the memory address of the new protect is, let's see, address, size, right, location of new protect. Let's follow this and dump. And the old protect. Right here. Okay. So we exit out of this execute to return. Step through. Keep stepping. And let me see, where do we screw up on? Let's see. Execute to return. Follow and dump. Let's try this again. We start this. Use line code. Go. I mean, play until virtual lock X. So this is a fun exercise in understanding the memory protection constants, which is really important in reverse engineering. Um, it always will when you click on um, dumps in x32 x64 debug you'll always start with the base address of the executable that you're running that's why you always see um, your uh, MZ header so we're gonna go back over here follow and dump keep executing till it goes through virtual protect execute return step through step one here and will you see how there's like a, a PE symbol right here and notice our memory protection constant so let's follow this and dump and we have our decompressed executable starting with this memory address So right now you don't have like, um, let me see if I can explain it to you. Sorry, I've been working on a lot of things. Uh, so I have different executables open actually. Um, you don't have like, let me open the original quack bot binary. You don't have like these weird sections which means it's successful that you unpacked it. Uh, general, so you have a data two and a data four, and we don't have that in memory here. And the way we figure that out is we went, we walked up, we stepped out of virtual protect, continue executing down the stack, followed and dump, and if you scroll back up, the beginning of the MZ header was right here. So you could have just done something like what I did before for, oops. What the? B for D5A 90, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0
open and look through the dump. Huh. Oh, from this memory address region. Starting from there. 45A. What the? This is weird. Control B. Control B. 45A. 90003. Okay, well, that was weird, but let's see. Breakpoint, follow memory map. And this is the section of memory that we want to follow. So, desktop. Read.bin. It's probably because we were following memory from here and we just scrolled back up so if you put this in pbear it should be the same exact thing your imports should be all of this and section headers do not need to be modified. So it's because it's already in mapped into memory. Um, but I do want to keep executing to see what happens. Because we have create process, is debugger present, virtual lock, virtual protect. But I want to um, this one, let's see, we hit virtual protect again, and let's see, this is just the base address, remember hex 400,000 for portable executables is just the base address, so let's see, follow this and dump, what else, what else are we doing? Let's turn off the breakpoint on virtual protect. And let's see if it's going to unlock again. Create process wide. Okay. So that's why I was spawning the malicious process, which did I spawn a child process yet? Not yet. Okay. Great process wine, argument, QBot. So it starts up another instance of QBot or QuackBot. So create process wine. Create process wine function. Let me check my phone real quick. Okay, it's just some um, DEF CON friends. The application name is your first argument, and it seems a lot of it is null. Okay, so what does it return? The return value, the return value is zero. So let's step out. And we have another instance of Qbot. So another way of doing this, besides manually unpacking, is you can use PEC which also is made by the makers of, oh, the process died, um, which is also made by the makers of a Q, a P pair. So you could have done PC pin uh, 2912 slash cell C, and then number four. And you could have gotten like um, a implanted Portable executable. In other words, let's go in process 292, GUR, and we could have gotten like the patch version of Qbot right here. So let's open that one in PBear. Process 2912. So 
this must be the application that let's see and if we all load this one let's just do a comparison because this is what happened and we're gonna load this one too desktop uh, desktop keybot execute bin so let me see 204 kilobytes and you could have retrieved the patched unpacked binary either or although I want to run something called cert util see if this is actually the same hash so another way you can do in checking file hashes in windows okay dir cert util hash file um, what was the payload again that I keep dumping SHA-256 and then you can also do the same thing for process 2192 and let's start up with 2 okay so that's just two ways that you can use to unpack is that you can actually wait until it unpacks itself and then you can run PEC against it against the running process while it's still in the debugger like that so that's another way that you can unpack it um, so that's just something like one of the more modern tools. Um, it does not matter apparently to the hashes how you got it unpacked, but if you are able to find the patch binary or unpacked binary within the post binary, you can do it this way as well.